Hey everyone, Magnus here, and today we're going to talk about the actual bitrate of the 5D Mark IV's MJPEG in 4K and compare that with Blackmagic RAW 12 to 1 compression. We'll see which one is more efficient when it comes to video editing and of course recording. How much is that going to steal from your cards? Coming right up. Behind you with like the clouds, the sky and everything can still be able to And then we've got the Rode video mic. Here we go. M50. What do you guys think? So if you're new to my channel, I talk about DSLR and cameras for video mostly. And we go over tips and hacks and all of that other stuff. Alright, so to kick things off, I did an experiment. I was asked an interesting question by Peter Gregg which you can subscribe to his channel right here. He asked me a, a little while ago, like, when you record Blackmagic RAW, is it more efficient than the MJPEG codec on the 5D Mark IV? And that codec is also featured on the 1DX Mark II. But we're talking about the 5D Mark IV here. And I was like, interesting question. I told him no, but then I wanted to test it to really see by how much. So I set up both cameras to face me and film me on my window. I shot it facing the window so you could see the dynamic range of both cameras. And I shot the 5D Mark IV in 4K, 24 frames per second using Canon Log. Then I shot the same scene using the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. And in each case, I wanted to push the cameras to see how much you could bring back and to bring it back to normal. So what I did was I had a, a good color balance in one of the shots. Then my next shot was temperature 2500 Kelvin and the other one was 10,000 Kelvin and the regular good color balance was around 4100 Kelvin. That's what I had to work with with this shot and I wanted to see if I could get both extremes as close to 4100 Kelvin naturally in post. So we're going to go with that and see how it turned out. And I also wanted to see the file sizes of both. What's Blackmagic RAW at and what's the 5D Mark IV's MJPEG at when you record exactly one minute of footage. So without any further ado, let's get back to the computer and see how these files worked. Okay, so what we've got and what I'm trying to display here is I've got the Blackmagic RAW footage here and I've got the MJPEG footage here. Now the MJPEG footage, you get thumbnails because the fact that this is a format that a PC can read. Right now there is no software that can read Blackmagic RAW files on a PC. It does exist for Mac, but it doesn't exist for PC as of yet. Each of these files that I recorded was purposely one minute long. So you can see that the file size is not really that different between these files. And these files as well, one minute long. Each of them, just one minute. Now Looking at each shot, so this was a minute file, this was a minute file that were recorded basically with the same settings and no moving window or anything. No, the camera didn't move, it was on a tripod, so the scene wasn't too complex. MJPEG footage on the 5D Mark IV, it's 3.61 gigabytes with the resolution at 4096 by 2160. On the Black Magic, the file size is about half. It actually, it's less than half. That is interesting to start off with, the fact that you can get raw on much smaller file sizes. But moving into something deeper, I wanted to increase the frame rate on the Blackmagic RAW. So this file right here, not so much this file, but this file right here was recorded at 60 frames per second, specifically to see how the data changes. So now the data, the, for one minute, it's 3.8 gigabytes. And this is compression 12 to 1, by the, by the way, on the Blackmagic RAW files. But you notice that the file for one minute is bigger. And that's because the Blackmagic camera does not keep the bit rate the same when you up the frames per second. Each frame is compressed pretty much in the same manner, depending on the compression type that you pick on the camera. Whereas with traditional DSLRs, you pick the bit rate and no matter what frames per second you're using, it's going to keep that bit rate. 
that's pros and cons. The pros meaning that you can make sure that you stay efficient and you don't get any surprises with the amount of time that you can record. But the major con is if you increase the frame rates, you're going to get degraded footage in faster frame rates. So moving on, what can you do with these files? So you have a larger bit rate on the 5D Mark IV. Is it actually better than Blackmagic RAW compressed 12 to 1? Well, let's see. I've got three scenarios here. In each of these scenarios, I have different color situations. This color card white balance situation was basically I used a color card to just balance the white balance on each of these cameras. And though they're a little different when it comes to how they balanced on the color, it's still presentable and realistic to what the room looked like when I filmed. Here, I dropped the temperature to 2500 Kelvin on each of these cameras. And as you can see, this is a little bit flatter footage on the film style of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Whereas with the 5D Mark IV, although this is C-Log, it still retains a bit more color information, which I did on purpose. I could have reduced the saturation if I wanted to, but I keep it because we're editing with 8-bit 422, which is a lot more limited color information when compared to the 12-bit raw footage that you get off the Blackmagic. And then the third scenario, I warmed it up each of the cameras to 10,000 Kelvin. What we're going to try to do is color correct to get the two blue and the two warm to look like this footage without getting too technical with the color correction. We're just trying to get it right. And of course, when it comes to the dynamic range of both cameras, given the scenes, they both didn't do that bad of a job, to be honest. The 5D Mark IV's dynamic range, 12 stops. Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, 13 stops. And in fact, because I had 5D Mark IV a bit darker, you get more detail here, whereas it was a little bit more washed out. But that's because I exposed for my face and not so much for the background as I did there. Working with this footage, I'm actually going to not really touch this too much. I'm going to go straight into the blue footage. Now, what we want to do is this is the black magic this is the 5d mark IV. so the original footage here is what we want to try to get to and we'll compare side by side in fact i'll put it up here the point of this is i want to get this to look like this as much as possible so i'm going to go into the original file from black magic now when i click on this file i get all of these effect settings for the actual clip itself now, this is from Bra Studio. Normally, you cannot edit, and Adobe has not updated their ability to edit the Blackmagic RAW clips in Premiere. But with this software that I downloaded, uh, Bra Studio, it lets you import directly all of those broad clips, which were a huge help because I tend to edit off of Adobe Premiere more than I do off of DaVinci Resolve. It's just I've used Premiere. It's what I'm used to. And it's what I'm sticking to for this. With this software, you're able to actually almost work it just like you do in the DaVinci Resolve. So I filmed at 320 ISO, but I have the ability in post to change ISO off of these smaller bitrate files. So I can increase it. I can increase it to up to 1000. It's got um, dual native ISOs. So I can just play with the footage as much as I want up to 1000 here. If I have it at 1250, then I'm at the second native ISO and can go really high with the ISOs, which is awesome. I want to look at the white balance because that's what we're trying to do. Now, the white balance was at 4100 color temperature and a tint of 24. So that's this. So now I'm going to clip, click on this clip, the blue clip, and I want to match that. I knew that the ISO, I left it at 400, right, yeah, so I left it at 400. So I'm gonna keep that there, but I'm gonna go into white balance controls. And the white balance was at 24, was the tint, but the color temperature was 4100. So let's, boom, what do you think? I recorded this with a 2500 Kelvin temperature. And now you can barely tell the difference between these two shots which one was had incorrect color balance can't tell all right 
Now this is a sl smaller bit rate, but let's go to the higher bit rate 5D Mark IV footage. Now the 5D Mark IV footage, which I'm going to bring in here, this was the original color corrected clip. Now, the thing with the 5D Mark IV, if I double click here, I don't have any of those controls. I have 8-bit 422 color information, but none of those controls. So I'm going to get a little creative. We're going to go to the color workspace, which I should have been from the get-go, right? So in the color workspace, we already know this is fine. But since we don't have that additional information here, we're going to have to tweak it a little bit. All right, so one of the ways I'm going to do is I have a white balance card that I held up. And I'm just going to hit white balance selector, see if that helps. Okay, I can I could kind of see some of the similarity, but it's a striking difference. You can tell here that Adobe had to automatically put the temperature as high as possible to take the blue out. And it slid the tint a little bit just to kind of compensate, which I could see what it was going for, but I don't consider that a success. So what I'm going to do is delete that and see if I can actually do it by putting up comparison shots, going with here with the original source and then off of the actual clip, have it pretty much face detect. We'll do the color reels and match, and we're going to do face detection, apply match to see if how close we can get. I mean, it's practically the same shot. So apply match, and there we go. <laughs> Looking at this footage, let me take out the comparison. It's not as orangey in the background like it was before. It didn't do a bad job, but it's it's not exactly usable when compared to the original footage. And granted, this is it's still log, so I can kind of tweak this, increase the contrast, the shadows, the blacks, get a little bit more saturated, increase the exposure a bit, and maybe it looks a little bit more digestible. Strange, but digestible. And then this, of course, apply the same things. When you do those same edits, I'd say, really detracts from the original shot what you were trying to represent so i think it's a clear-cut winner and as if you're not surprised black magic i'll do the same thing here and i'll take these edits apply it to here which was the original blue footage so it's the exact same color grade and it looks pretty close really close <laughs> This was the way it was originally shot. This was when I had it all blue. This is pretty darn close. I don't want to say shot rescued. You look at this and that. This is the original, which is not still not as pretty. And the blue footage is just ruined. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. What if we did it too warm? Too warm. I think is a little bit closer to what we were trying to do. So we're going to go to here, that too warm footage. Again, pull it down to clip. We know we had the white balance at, see, it was at 10,000. We're going to do 4,100. And boom. I think we're back to normal. I'll do that same split screen again original footage on top to warm footage on the bottom what's the difference can you tell which is which barely and now here we go with the mjpeg higher bit rate codec of the 5d mark IV. i think the color match did the best job so we'll try color match once again color wheels and match apply match and again it's not that bad of a job it's just not great what do you guys think this is the corrected and this is the original this was too warm and i i think it's slightly usable but it's not entirely clean and this a lot more usable <laughs> in fact it looks exactly the same and by the way scrubbing 
usually I don't have problems with the MJPEG scrubbing and it's still not bad for two different clips, but it does slow down a bit more or it gets like choppy, right? Whereas the Blackmagic RAW, it's a pretty smooth playing RAW file in Adobe Premiere. Look at how smooth that is. No hiccups and it's just a breeze. Quite honestly, it really sells it to me that Blackmagic RAW, first of all, props to Bra Studio because they really did a good job integrating this software into Adobe Premiere. Uh, it, it's seamless and it makes editing, at least for me, a heck of a lot easier. And much credit given to Blackmagic for their unbelievable compression settings and quality. Now let me show you a bit of quality of how the footage looks when it's output. Here's the quality of the footage, Blackmagic RAW. Absolutely incredible quality in 4K. And this is the quality with a, a bit of color correction on the 5D Mark IV, which still looks good, but I love Canon's color science, but my goodness, the difference. <laughs> anyway, that's what I had to show you guys. And there you have it. Looks like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K footage is a ton more efficient and a lot more usable in post when compared to the 5D Mark IV's 8-bit 422 JPEG. That's quite unfortunate, but it's an interesting time that we live in now. And the Blackmagic just came out versus the Canon 5D Mark IV, which was released in 2016. So it is what it is, but as time moves forward, hopefully more cameras will have the ability to record RAW internal. And if Canon was able to do that as efficiently as Blackmagic, they could just even put that type of RAW in their cinema cameras, and that would still be amazing, rather than uh, large files. But it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think of this quick test, and what else would you like to see tested? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, like, share, and you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.